So what's the exact HCG dose to sustain? Intratesticular testosterone levels based on the results of this study using some highly dubious extrapolated math, I would say, And that brings us to finding the ideal dose of HCG to sustain testicular function while using exogenous testosterone and perhaps other suppressive steroids or even SARMs, which has been investigated in the following study. Spoiler alert though, it's not 5,000 IUs three times weekly, it's not even 500 IUs three times weekly. The following study was performed by Coviello et al., published on May 2005, titled Low Dose Human Chorionic Gonadotropin Maintains Intertesticular Testosterone in Normal Men with Testosterone Induced Gonadotropin Suppression. That's basically our kinds of people. In this study, 24 healthy adult men aged between 18 to 45 years old with normal hormone and fertility parameters received 200 mg testosterone anatate intramuscularly weekly to suppress their gonadotropin levels. That being GnRH, gonadotropin hormone releasing hormone, LH, luteinizing hormone, and FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. At the same time, these men also received either 125 IUs HCG, 250 IUs HCG, or 500 IUs. HCG or placebo subcutaneously every other day of the week for a total treatment duration of three weeks. It's not mentioned what kind of brand of HCG they used and whether that was urine purified or recombinant, but since this study is from 2005, it's highly likely that urine purified HCG was used. The researchers analyzed blood work results at baseline and weekly during the three-week treatment. Hormone and fertility parameters were rechecked three months after the treatment to ensure all men had a normally functioning hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis again. In order to assess intertesticular testosterone levels of the subjects, the researchers obtained testicular fluid through percutaneous aspiration, a needle straight into the ball sack. I mean, my stomach is just turning thinking about it and my balls have completely retracted to the point where my kidneys are. They did this at baseline and after three weeks of treatment with testosterone enethate and humor chorionic gonadotropin. As you can see in figure one, there was a dose dependent and time dependent increase in serum HCG levels, indicating that HCG builds up in serum with every other day administrations. But the researchers didn't always check serum HCG the day after the injection. On day 14 of the treatment, there was a 48 hours between the injection and drawing blood for analysis. Hence, there's a reduction in serum levels compared to day seven, right? You can clearly see this in figure one. Testosterone enethate plus placebo suppressed intertesticular testosterone levels by 94% at the end of the treatment. It decreased by 25% in the testosterone enethate plus 125 IUS HCG group. It decreased by only 7% in the testosterone enethate plus 250 IUS HCG group. And the only group in which intertesticular testosterone levels actually increased was the testosterone enethate plus 500 IUS HCG group, which saw an increase of 26%. So we're going to have to find a middle ground to sustain intertesticular testosterone levels within normal parameters, unless this 26% is what you're after on top of your TRT dose. When you scroll down to figure 4a, you can clearly see that intertesticular testosterone levels only increased in the testosterone enethate plus 500 IUS HCG group when compared to baseline readings. And in figure 2, you can see that testosterone enethate plus either 250 IUS HCG or 500 IUS HCG, that the additional HCG at these high dosages was able to bring serum total testosterone levels to super physiological levels, whereas testosterone enethate plus placebo, aka test E solo, or testosterone enethate plus 125 IUS HCG, uh, kept serum levels within normal parameters, albeit towards the top of the reference range. So what's the exact HCG dose to sustain? Intertesticular testosterone levels based on the results of this study using some highly dubious extrapolated math, I would say that 280 IUs ATG every other day is the dose to go with. But if you want to go with injection convenience, inject three times weekly, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then let's round that up to 325 IUs ATG instead. As further confirmation of the speculative dose of 325 IUs ATG three times per week, Let's assess the dose-dependent response to HCG regarding serum estradiol levels. Besides testosterone synthesis and spermatogenesis, HCG will also stimulate estradiol production directly within the testicles. And even though you can use aromatase inhibitors to suppress the conversion of testosterone into estradiol, aromatase inhibitors aren't able to enter the testicles and directly inhibit estradiol synthesis locally. Aromatase inhibitors mostly work in other parts of the body, specifically 
adipose tissue. So if you have a low body fat levels, but you still mega dose, mega blast the HCG serum estradiol levels will still be sky freaking high. And as we saw in the high dose studies, after a certain point as HCG dosages escalate upwards, serum total testosterone levels don't really improve, but serum estradiol levels end up sky freaking high. So let's try to find out which dose of HCG gives you the highest testosterone levels with minimal negative effects on your serum estradiol levels. This study is performed by Roth et al. published in August 2010 titled Dose Dependent Increase in Intratesticular Testosterone by Very Low Dose Human Chorionic Gonadotropin in Normal Men with Experimental Gonadotropin Deficiency. This study investigated hormonal response to various dosages of ATG at 15 IUs, 60 IUs, and 125 IUs subcutaneously every other day. And you see here in Table 1 that at 125 IUs ATG every other day, serum and intratesticular testosterone start to increase, but serum estradiol is a bit lower than baseline. The next study is performed by Padron et al. published on June 1980, so that's even older than the high-dose studies, but hey, we gotta work with what we have access to, right? Titled, Prolonged biphasic response of plasma testosterone to single intramuscular injection of human chorionic gonadotropin. This study is a little bit more applicable than the previous one. The researchers also investigated hormonal response to various dosages of ATG at 93.75 IUs, 375 IUs, 1500 IUs, and even 6000 IUs intramuscularly in a single injection followed by multiple blood drawns up until 144 hours or six days after the administration. And if you think that 93.75 IUs is very, very detailed, it's basically the same thing that I was doing when I split the Merck Overthrow recommended ATG 6,500 IU serving in sixes, I got 1,083 IUs per serving, right? So we have to keep it accurate for the sake of the community. After 16 hours, you see that serum total testosterone levels start to rise in all groups, but there's no steep response curve in the 375 IO group when compared to the 1500 IO group or the 6000 IO group. The 375 IO group ended up with a total testosterone level around 1000 nanograms per deciliter, 48 hours after the single intramuscular administration. But I think with progressive administrations, let's say three times per week or every other day, serum total testosterone levels would slowly creep upwards as serum HCG levels seem to compound with consecutive administrations, as was shown in previous studies. Regarding estradiol levels, those start to increase within the first couple of hours after the administration, and in the 375 IO group, there was a steady increase ending up around 75 picograms per milliliter, 96 hours after the injection, so the dose is probably already too high, unless an aromatase inhibitor is used. And with consecutive administrations of 375 IUs, I'm sure serum estradiol levels would start to creep upwards also, right? If testosterone levels go up, then as these come uh, down, in this coming down, it either converts into data testosterone or estradiol. So there seems to be a little bit of a delayed response. Initially, total testosterone levels come up, and as testosterone comes down, serum estradiol levels come up, and with consecutive administrations, this would be worse. So I would say that 125 IOs is too little and 375 IOs is too much, right, regarding serum estradiol levels. Moving over to another study performed by Smalls et al., published in February 1984, also freaking old, but very applicable for the guys who are still worried about desensitization, titled Differential Effect of Single High Dose and Divided Small Dose Administrations of Human Chorionic Gonadotropin on Latex Cell Stereogenic Desensitization. In this study, seven healthy adult men aged between 18 to 45 years old received either 1500 IOs urine purified HCG in a single dose intramuscularly or 300 IOs urine purified HCG daily for five consecutive days. So that's also a total dose of 1500 IOs also administered intramuscularly. Serum testosterone rose slower in the 300 IO HCG daily group compared to the 1500 IO group in a single administration and ended up almost as high after five days of treatment. So even though the dose goes up initially slower, after five days of treatment, total testosterone levels are pretty much identical. But serum estradiol levels were significantly lower in the 300 IU daily group, indicating that smaller, more frequent injections are just as effective as high-dose bolus injections of HCG when it comes to your total testosterone levels 
and smaller, more frequent injections are preferable to manage your serum ester dye levels and keep them more favorable. As you can clearly see from figure one, that even though total testosterone ends up at very similar levels at let's say 1100 to 1200 nanograms per deciliter between the 1500 IOs intramuscularly in a single shot or spaced out over four days, you see that uh, serum ester dye levels, instead of ending up at 80 picograms per milliliter in a single shot of 1500 IOs ACG, if you do that over five consecutive days, at the highest, you get a serum ester dye level of, let's say, 50 picograms per milliliter, which is certainly more favorable, even though it's super physiological, most men can get away with a serum ester dye level around 50 picograms per milliliter. And if this total testosterone is, well, also super physiologic, I think on an ACG monotherapy of 300 IOs every single day, you feel pretty freaking good. And then the last study I want to highlight in this video, performed by Kalos Bonauser et al., published in August 2008, titled Evaluation of Endocrine Testing of Latex Cells Function Using Extractive and Recombinant Human Chorionic Gonadotropin and Different Doses of Recombinant Human Luteinizing Hormone in Normal Men. This study looked at the exponential dosage response curve using extracted, aka urine purified, human chorionic gonadotropin when either 50 IUs, 500 IUs, or 5000 IUs HCG was administered to eight healthy men aged between 18 to 30 years old. Here in table one, you see that the 500 IU HCG dose increased serum total testosterone levels by around 72% from the bottom to the middle of the reference range, but estradiol increased by 113% from the bottom middle of the reference range to the top of the reference range, which is very similar results to the previous studies using 500 IOS HCG or upwards. And when you look at figure two, you can see that there's a linear response to the exponential dosage increase when it comes to serum total testosterone levels, which means diminishing returns as the dosage escalates upwards. But serum ester dye levels also increase at an exponential rate, meaning that there's a direct dose dependent response to how much HCG you inject. Taking all of the scientific evidence into consideration, more frequent, albeit lower dosages around 300 IOs every other day or three times weekly seems to raise testosterone production and keep intertesticular testosterone levels sustained. Maybe serum concentrations might raise slightly, but not at the expense of increasing serum ester dye levels disproportionately. But let's say you add HCG to your existing TRT protocol consisting of 50 milligrams testosterone anathate Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 150 milligrams per week. And in between those injections, you take 300 IOs or 325 IOs HCG Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, then you're still going to have to put methods in place to control your serum ester dye levels because the combination of exogenous testosterone and HCG at this effective dose will still send your ester dye levels to a point you're going to need to manage those with over-the-counter supplements or aromatized inhibitors like I discuss in these videos. So keep this in mind going forward. ATG monotherapy at 300 IOs three times per week um, might give you identical testosterone levels, but if you ramp up the dose higher, you will get superphysiological testosterone levels. But at, as the dose escalates upwards, serum ester dye levels will increase disproportionately forcing you to use an aromatized inhibitor or some sort of over-the-counter supplement to keep those ester dye levels suppressed. But when you combine ATG with TRT, you're going to need an aromatized inhibitor most likely. Which brings us to the ideal dosing protocol of human chorionic gonadotropin, whether that's urine purified or recombinant. For men doing monotherapy, I would say 500 IOs to 1,000 IOs subcutaneous or intramuscularly three times weekly on Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the way to go. To sustain testicular function on cycle, the dose can be anywhere between 250 IOs to 500 IOs, but ideally that's 325 IOs subcutaneous or intramuscularly three times weekly in between your testosterone injections if you do that three times weekly or uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday if you do that daily. Uh, the injections of the testosterone are daily, but the subcutaneous administrations of HCG can be three times weekly. The fertility dose on and off cycle is anywhere between 1,000 to 1,500 IOs subcutaneous or intramuscularly three times weekly, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or even daily. So some guys prefer 1,500 IOs HEG subcutaneous or intramuscularly daily to really bring their fertility parameters up to par on what they want them to be. Now, the deleterious dose is a little bit of an overstatement. It's simply because 
over 5,000 IOs three times weekly hasn't been investigated or I couldn't find any clear scientific evidence that men were taking, let's say, 6,500 IOs three times weekly or 10,000 IOs HCG three times weekly. Um, so I would prefer not to go over that, but at 5,000 IOs three times weekly, there were no clear signs of desensitization and fertility parameters were slowly but steadily coming upwards, even alongside testosterone anthate treatment. So because there's no scientific evidence, I would prefer anybody not to go over 5,000 IOs three times weekly. And I don't even think that that's um, a worthy experiment of running because personally, I think your balls would be on fire running this much HCG. And regarding women, the only real practical application for women is to induce ovulation, in which case it's either between 5,000 IOs to 10,000 IOs, urine purified HCG, subcutaneous or intramuscularly, depending on how much adverse reactions these women get at the injection sites. Again, there is some impurities in urine purified HCG or stick with 6,500 IOs recombinant HCG subcutaneous in a single injection to induce ovulation. Again, recombinant HCG is where it's at, in my opinion, both for men and women.